We developed the SOM in collaboration with a group at Berkeley. They used our two photon MOM microscopes and wanted a simpler microscope with the same XYZ motorized positioning of the objective. For the rig they wanted to build, they did not need the expensive two photon imaging related parts of the MOM design. We designed them a small, simple microscope which is mounted on a standard MP285 manipulator mechanical to provide motorized objective positioning with the included MPC200 controller. So with the MP285 mechanical here, the SOM could move the objective 25 millimeters in X, Y, and Z using either the manual ROE input device here or via computer commands over USB. The motorized, motorized position of the objective allows the specimen to be static. This is important for many behavioral as well as sensory stimulation experiments where the behavioral apparatus may be large or a number of computer screens may be used to provide visual input to the specimen. The SOM can accommodate two RMS thread objectives on the swing nose piece. A single larger diameter objective can be mounted by removing the swing nose piece and this aluminum block. The fluorescent excitation port is on the left side of the microscope, here. A light source can be attached with either CMAP threading or 30 millimeter cage components. The SOM includes a two position filter cube of our own design, which accepts filters in the most common size available from Semrock and Chroma. The filter cube position can easily be changed even during electrophysiological recordings because there is no detent to cause vibration. The camera port here provides standard C-mount threading. You can adjust the rotation of the camera as well as the position relative to the tube lens. The microscope height can be adjusted with the gantry height adjustment here, and other gantry heights are available. SOM rigs have become common in fields like Drosophila electrophysiology where the specimen does not allow transmitted illumination and maximizing space beneath the objective is important. The SOM can also be used for in vitro experiments using a simple LED with a diffuser where optical quality is a low priority, though we also provide a moving OCC condenser option. If the primary purpose of a rig is in vitro experiments, we would suggest you use one of our other microscopes such as the Bob and Nan. My colleague Ali is now going to tell you about the manipulators and stands on this rig. In this setup here, we have an MP285 manipulator, my traditional manipulators, and an MP225 manipulator. Both of these manipulators are capstan manipulators. That means there is a cable pulling in one direction and springs going into the other direction. In this case, we have taken the 285 here and made it into a microscope. I also want you to note that because of the weight of the microscope, we have reinforced the z-axis with these extra springs on the side. I want to concentrate on the stands. In this setup here, I'm using two MT75 short stands for the manipulators and one MT75T, or tall, for the microscope. Our stands are very useful because this stand here gives you the freedom to approach or come back, that I call that the X freedom, to rotate the stand on the center post here which is, gives you the Y freedom, also to take it up and down, which gives you the Z freedom. Bo all of these three manipulators are attached to two MPC200s, and all three devices are operating off of this one ROE200. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'd like to introduce the NAN, N-A-N. This is a microscope for either patch clamp electrophysiology or in vivo. And what I mean by that is the microscope is height adjustable. You'll notice that the microscope frame has been replaced by a blue rail. This blue rail is the same extrusion that we use for our MT75 gantries and also our motorized stage. Within the core of the NAN, we have a 25 millimeter Z axis for the focusing. In this case, we're using an Olympus um, swinging nose piece and focusing arm. This microscope also has a BX2 at the illuminator and trinoc, and generally all Olympus optics. 
Specifically, the transmitted light system has both a white light and IR LED at 940 nanometers. The 940 nanometer LED is used for IR DIC. This entire transmitted light system can be easily removed when switching between in vivo and slice and it's also impervious to spills. Uh, and You'll notice there is actually a drain here in case the inevitable does happen and there's a spill. This microscope is also using the Lambda 721 as the epi-source and I'm just going to talk about it briefly for a minute. And that's this light source right here. It combines seven LED cubes into a single output path without the use of any dichroic mirrors. This LED cube contains the LED, optics, and a single filter in an assembly that's easy to change. The unique light path allows for any user to install the LED in any position without concern for spectral order. The LED cubes that we offer range from 285 nanometers to 940 nanometers. This one has a 340, a 480, a 561, a 385, a 440, and a 530. This microscope also has a manipulator installed that my colleague Ali is going to talk about. In this setup, we are doing something a little bit less traditional. That means the manipulator and the stage are moving together. The microscope is sitting still. Both the stage, the Z focus of the microscope, and this manipulator are attached to an MPC 200 and they are both operated with one ROE on the tabletop. In this case this is my newer manipulators. They are called the TRIO 845. They are screw driven manipulators and one of the reasons I chose that for this setup that the stage is moving is because of the stage. One major feature in this new manipulator is the door. So my traditional doors open up 90 degrees. And sometimes that is difficult to change pipettes over here. But look at this one. I unscrew the door and the manipulator comes up and away, making it easy to change pipettes. So my new 845 manipulator connected to an MPC 200. Later on, I will show you different controllers for the same manipulator on, a, on another stage similar to this one. This is another version of NAN that we're calling Simple NAN. And what I mean by simple is that there's a single objective nose piece, a single filter cube, which you can change with no tools. Um, there's no tri-knock, it's just an Olympus tube lens and C-mount for the camera. It's mounted on a manual translator. Uh, these are our newer manipulators in the narrow format 865 that my colleague Ali is going to talk about. This transmitted light base is a single white light LED uh, going through the Olympus OCC condenser. OCC stands for Oblique Coherent Contrast. It's a very nice condenser. The LED is powered with the TLED driver, which you can see here. You can send that TTL pulses if you wanted to trigger uh, the LED on and off. But really what I want to show here is just kind of the, uh, the wide variety of options for the NAN. For example, you can choose the single objective nose piece, or you can choose the two position swinging nose piece from Olympus. You can choose the single epi cube or you can choose the BX2 or BX3 RFA. Any combination of motorized stage or translator or manual stage or translator. You can use the single um, transmitted light assembly or the dual transmitted light assembly with IR for IR DIC. And again, Trinoc or tube lens. And these are kind of, you can use any combination of this together. And now my colleague Ali is gonna talk about the manipulators. In this setup is my favorite setup because as you can see it's very very busy and nice and full of potential. In this setup I am using the solo to control my Z focus. 
you can see that all three pipettes go out of focus and then they come back into focus. Uh, I could have used the work position, which I have memorized here, and they would have gone robotically to those. My solo can be used to control single axes, and that's mostly the way we sell them. In this case, a 50 millimeter moving axis for it usually used in, in vivo setups with cops and stolting uh, stands. Uh, and I do have a 25 millimeter moving axis as well. The three manipulators are being controlled by two MPC 200s daisy chained together and operated with one ROE 200. I can move from my first pipette to the second pipette and I'm just moving the X axis in all of them without trying not to break the stuff. And this is the Y axis and then Z in and out of focus but this time individual because I'm not moving the microscope but just the pipette. As I mentioned before, I love this setup because of the simplicity of the NAN and the area it gives around me. In this case, the NAN is sitting on a manual translator. And as you can see, I can move all three pipettes together in X and Y. And you saw the Z focusing motorizably. You can get it with a motorized translator. Most people choose the manual translator. In terms of the manipulator, I am using three of my narrow format manipulators. We call them the 865 manipulators, connected to two MPC 200s. The narrow format manipulator is, has a very long traveling x-axis, 50 millimeters, traditional 25 millimeters in Z, and the way we have made it narrow is by having the y-axis here only travel 25, uh, sorry, 12.5 millimeters. The reason to have a narrow format manipulator is exactly for setups like this. As you can see, I can put three on this side. And if I wanted to, I could put three on the other side and have six probes going into the sample. Because we have made the narrow format manipulator, we, are, we have also made the narrow format stand. It would be crazy to put the narrow format manipulators on a narrow, on a, a regular format a stand. In this case, because the x-axis travels 50 millimeters, I don't have the need to pull these back, just that action of 50 will give me enough room to change pipettes. These stands, like the rest of my stands, can be adjusted in X. They can rotate for the Y axis adjustment, and they can be adjusted in height. Now, we have, in addition to just the simple regular stand, we have one with a linear slide. The problem with the linear slide is it has the same features, by the way. Uh, it can be rotated, the height can be adjusted, but the linear slide, one can have the manipulator here and pull back on the whole manipulator. By getting further away from the setup, again, pipette changing will become easier. The problem with this setup is it is more expensive than the normal stand. The one tower that I have not spoken about is the tower that holds the sample. We make a variety of towers for a variety of different uh, heights. This is the height that it works very well with the simple NAN. In this case, I am using a 3x6 base plate, so it will be narrow, easier to fit on my very limited space here. That is a 3x6 tower, the base plate. The normal base plate that is 
most of the time shipped with these things is a six by six. Again, in this setup with the crazy number of manipulators and, and such, I thought that the narrow format will be a better fit. In addition to this octagonal hole that we have, we have many, many, many different arms for these setups. I brought just a couple here. One of them was a very simple, old, old 35 millimeter Petri holder. We make them a different size for different Petris. And the one we sell the most is the one with the round opening here. Uh, we have a variety of them online. And if you have more questions, please contact Sutter. We have made custom ones for people as well as we might already have the answer you're looking for. All right, now I'd like to talk about the Bob system. Now the Bob is different from most electrophysiology scopes that you've seen before. And you'll notice the microscope frame has been replaced with a blue optical rail that you see here. And the entire Bob system is connected to this blue optical rail with a single connection point. And the point of that is easy height adjustment. All you have to do is loosen those two screws and bring the microscope up or down. This entire core mounts with that single point. Within the core is the 25 millimeters of Z focus, which moves the um, Olympus focusing arm and two position swinging nose piece. Also moves up and down is the Epiluminator itself and the Trinoc. And in this particular configuration, we're using one of the most popular epi sources that's purchased with this system usually, and that is a 480 LED and a 561 LED direct mounted to the epi illuminator. And that buys you GFP excitation, channel rhodopsin stimulation, et cetera, along with a lot of other green exciters, red emitters. This entire Bob system is mounted on a motorized XY translator that moves 25 millimeters in X and Y. And on top of that translator is a white light transmitted light system that's waterproof and also contains the Olympus OCC condenser. We also on this system have our newer style gantries, which are the MT95s, and my colleague Ali is going to talk about these along with the manipulators. Okay, my colleague forgot to tell you that the TLED DC, the dual channel, is powered by those two purple FLED power supplies on the corner. So I want to talk about some of my other screw driven manipulator, which I call them my in vivo manipulators. So all of our manipulators are capable of doing a diagonal move. By simultaneously moving Z and X, they create a diagonal move. So my in vivo customers did not like that and wanted the pipette to be along the axes of the motor. For that reason, we first made the quad. The quad is probably the best of both worlds. That means it can easily do in vivo by with this true diagonal, the red axis, the true diagonal axis that can be angled any which way. And it has the traditional X, Y, and Z manipulators there. In this case, the, the quad controller is a singular controller uh, and it's sitting on that side. On this side, I have, so we said, okay, so how can we make it less expensive? And we made the Trio 235. The 235 does not have the Z axis. The way it does the Z axis, and you can see by changing of the focus, is by moving D and X simultaneously. So it does the math in those things. But for the in vivo part, it does the diagonal. And I, as you can see, the pipette is moving forward and getting out of focus. So knowing that it can be doing it diagonal. I've had customers that this, uh, this 50 millimeter D axis here can get angled any way you want from completely horizontal to completely vertical and very very simple controller in this case I have a busy controller 
set up here but I wanted to show you all my controllers so the 235 and the quad they are singular controller but I'm using the bob to control the microscope the focus both of them going out of focus coming in focus and moving the translator in X and Y axis Again, a little bit of a busy setup, but some people do prefer these controllers to be separate for the different pipettes and the whole microscope. So in this setup, I am using what we call the, my newest stands. They call the MT95s. Very, very simple stands. They, they are as easy as putting this set screw into a table. We make it both in metric M6 or quarter 20 for an SAE table. The thing that we like about these, th uh, these towers that I've maintained all three degrees of freedom, the Y can be adjusted by rotating this around, and the Z can be adjusted by going up and down. If you need this taller because you have a very tall microscope, we can make you longer center post. The more important as compared to our competitors, I like the fact that we have maintained our X freedom by having the saddle, which we call this part the saddle, in uh, like our old traditional towers, we can dovetail these uh, gantries in and have them set at any X that we want. So that gives you all three degrees of freedom. By the way, this is the adapter plate that we use to connect any of our manipulators. Over here, I've spoken about the 235, the quad. Earlier, I spoke about the 865, the Trio 845, the MP225, the MP285. In order to install any of them on any surface, you need to first install this adapter plate. This is a two-photon bob. It makes use of components originally designed for the Sutter DF scope. That scope was built on an Olympus BX51 frame. Because of the bob's modularity and similarity to the Olympus BX, we can move the same components over to the bob frame and make a scope we call Bob 2P. I should also stress that the two photon components in either the Bob 2P or the DF scope are identical to those used in the MOM. For example, you can appreciate the fact that the MOM slide is tilted and becomes this level in the Bob 2P. The detector path is built into this, is over here and built into this special purpose BX51 illuminator. But it's the same detector path that we call the short path when used on a MOM scope. I want to further emphasize that all the scan boxes developed for the MOM can be mounted on this horizontal surface in the back and used in the Bob 2P or the DF scope. That includes the new RGG scan box. In fact, the first RGG scan box we sold was installed in a Bob 2P at Thomas Bodden's lab at the University of Sussex in the UK. So in this setup, again, because this is a 2P microscope, the 2P bob, we have it on a motorized stage. The, so the stage moves because of the laser, the, the microscope stands still. The stage and the Z focus is controlled by our newest 285, which we call the 285A. But in this case, I wanted to show you the MPC-100. The MPC-100 is also a dual controller, just like the MPC-200. So I can connect it to two different manipulators. In this case, two trios. I could have connected it to my old traditional manipulators as well, but it was made for the trio. So I can then switch between manipulator one and two. With this one, you cannot daisy chain and have four devices, just two. But it's a very, very simple box, so there is not a separate ROE and a controller, just this ROE slash controller in one. In this case, the second manipulator over there is sitting on a rotating base, and that's because 
as was explained earlier, there is a detector in the way that forced me to use a rotating base on the on the manipulator on the left. The right one is still sitting on the adapter plate. Now, for thermal stability, we have made the same trio uh, 845 out of stainless steel. This is not made out of gold, but it is made out of stainless steel. The reason for the gold color here is titanium nitrite uh, used to coat these uh, stainless steel parts. This is the same coating they use for stuff like drill bits so they don't rust. It is very heavy. I wish you were here so you can feel how heavy it is as compared to the aluminum ones. It is thermally more stable because stainless steel has a better expansion coefficient as compared to aluminum. And the heaviness was a point that we were not really thinking about, but it was serendipity that it dampens vibrations a lot. So if I were to be using speed zero over here, which is the fastest speed at Sutter, this might vibrate on there, so I then need to get it to a slower speed one or two or three, but with this one, I can probably get away with speed zero because of the dampening of the weight of the stainless steel. The Sutter Moving Objective Microscope, or MOM, is not a new product. However, we constantly add new features, alternative paths, and functionality. Today I'd like to give you a quick tour of some of our newest MOM features. If you would like further info on the basic MOM design, please feel free to contact Sutter at any time. First, just for clarification, the central core of the MOM, which consists of the large slide and the XY move, XYZ movement of the objective, is identical to the original Winifred Denk design from more than 15 years ago. What that means is that new features we add today, be it scanning hardware, detector paths, or three photon capability, can all be retrofit into the very first MOMs we sold. In addition, you do not need to worry that a MOM purchased today will become obsolete as newer technology becomes available. We've always strived to make modifications that can be added to existing scopes in the field. So now, the new features. This is a light blocking cover that keeps ambient light and visual stimuli from getting to the sensitive PMTs in the detector path. We've installed these on new scopes for several labs in the last year and also sent them to existing customers who've purchased MOMs in the past. Dan Dombeck first developed a light cover like this for the short path detector on the MOM in his lab. Now we have extended the same concept for the wide path detector. A light type cover with a hole in the top sits above the objective. The hole has a filter that allows infrared excitation light through that blocks visible wavelengths. In this version for the wide path, the cover moves out of the way for wide field imaging. Next I want to show you a brand new feature for the short path detector. The Adesnik lab at UC Berkeley wanted the ability to use three different markers in one experiment. In this case, giving the, them the ability to change the emission bandpass filter on one PMT during the experiment filled that need. So in this case, one can have interchangeable emission filters on a single side of the emission splitting dichroic. This design makes use of the Simrock Sutter threaded ring filters to keep the filter and holder extra thin. The MOM we've been looking at on the table in front of us has a Sutter designed resonant Galvo Galvo scan box. Several years ago it was realized that one way to add additional scanning functionality to a scanning scope with a Galvo Galvo scan path was to add a resonant scanner that was relayed into the Galvo scanners. Such a scan path called RGG for resonant Galvo Galvo has several attributes. First it can be used either as a resonant Galvo scanner or as a Galvo-Galvo scanner by simply keeping either one of the Galvos or the resonant scanner fixed during scanning. 
Such an RGG system allows for fast RG scanning for monitoring calcium activity or slow Galvo-Galvo scanning for structural imaging in a single scope with a single laser path. Furthermore, one can use the Galvo-Galvo functionality to direct photostimulation at a particular location or multiple locations, followed by activity monitoring of the entire field of view with a resonant Galvo scanner. We wanted to stay away from a lens-based relay system because we were worried that the additional glass of the relay lenses would increase pulse dispersion of the excitation beam. Ultimately, we used a design from an earlier Sutter project, the DG4. The DG4 uses parabolic mirrors to relay one Galvo focus onto the other. With a mirror-based relay system, we no longer need to worry about additional pulse dispersion in the excitation beam. And it turns out this also allows us to keep the total scan box design smaller than in other RGG systems. This shows one functionality of the RGG scan box. We are imaging the entire field of view using the RNG scanners. I've selected two regions of interest already and I will stop scanning and add a third. Now I select regions of interest scanning and press focus to begin scanning. And now you can see that not the entire field but just the regions of interest are being scanned, in this case by the RGG scanners in concert. To convert to three photon, the MOM core is somewhat modified to make space for a larger tube lens. This is the standard tube and tube lens that the XYZ head of the MOM rotates on the front of the scope. That tube is shortened and a mounting flange is added with the larger tube lens. We originally started building 3P MOMs using the Thorlab scan and tube lenses, but have now moved to our own optics so we can guarantee supplies. The scan lens changeover simply requires a scan lens mount with a smaller diameter hole for the alternate lens. Please call us or email info at Sutter.com to discuss system configurations tailored to your research. Additional product information is also available on our website. Explore our YouTube channel to find our latest support videos and product announcements. Subscribe now!